Okay, for some reason, my camera's acting up, and after it's filling a bit, it stops. So this is going to be several different videos, apparently, depending on how often the camera stops. Um, so I was just telling you about using polymorph with aluminum. And then uh, a while back, I got into co uh, quadcopters. And this is the $100 um, Hobby King quadcopter. And I had this break. And I ended up repairing it a couple of times with polymorph and a carbon fiber rod. And then I also used the polymorph to attach LEDs and to attach a sonar thing and things like that and attach the camera. Um, so it's just really useful for sticking stuff together. And when I have, I have an Elevate and crashed the Elevate and the landing gear broke. And so I repaired the landing gear with polymorph and carbon fiber. And there's poly polymorph up here to make the connections back to the frame. And so I started uh, making a hexacopter. And I wanted landing gear on the hexacopter, but not exactly like the landing gear of the Elevate. Even though I copied a lot of the Elevate features on this, like the motor mounts have the same Elevate shape and things like that. But this is the landing gear I came up with. And you can kind of see they're nice and flexible. And also, they are bolted in. They have nuts um, embedded in the landing gear. So I just screw, put a, uh, a bolt through them and, and it secures it that way. I just really like that, the way they can attach so easily. And I was going to explain a little bit how I made those landing gear. Someone commented that they look kind of nice, which I agree, actually. I really like the way they turned out. And they're all, you know, they all look about the same. And they're nice and springy. You know, so as, you, as the quad as the hexacopter comes down, it'll kind of give a little bit of a bounce, a little, yeah, flexes a bit to absorb some of the shock. I think it turned out pretty cool. And so, in trying to do it, I tried a couple different ways. Tried an early attempt that was too, too flexible, too thin. And this is one pretty close to what I ended up with. But I ended up adding nuts. I embedded nuts in, as I showed you, um, to make it easier to attach. But this is 8.8 .8 grams of polymorph. Okay? And so, but then this bag is how many grams? 500 grams. Now at SparkFun they sell either 250 gram bags or um, a kilogram bag. So you could bake, you know, all blending gear together was just a little bit over 50 grams. So you could make 10 sets of landing gear, 10 sets of six landing gear with this bag. So what, that uh, um, 60 landing gear with this bag. That's kind of a lot. Um, it's not, not cheap, but not really expensive either. It's a lot cheaper than the Sugru stuff, although the Sugru comes in nice colors. So this is also, so this is 8.8 .8 grams. This is 8.8 .8 grams of polymorph. Let's get these little beads. And these are the beads that comes in. At least with the stuff I have, these are the size of the beads. And I think the polymorph has the same size. And these are about uh, 32 milligrams each. And this just doesn't look the same as this to me. It just That just looks wrong. But So I double-checked it, and it's right. This is 8.8 .8 grams, and this is 8.8 .8 grams. It just, just doesn't look like it to me, though. But that's the way it is. And so, and that's what I did. I, I weighed out the, the polymorph ahead of time, so I'd have each one would weigh the same, melted the 8.8 .8 grams, and shoved it into my mold. This is my mold. And what I ended up finally coming up with is I have these nuts, these uh, bolts with nuts that are embedded within the mold. And so I heat up the polymorph. I use a heat gun, just because I don't like the water getting things wet. And so, and then I just squish the polymorph in. And then once, you know, and if it doesn't squish in as well, it like hardens up as I'm squishing it in, I just take the heat gun and zap the area with the heat gun. And the, this metal tape conducts the heat really well. And so it just melts it back down and I can squish it in the rest of the way. And so I just, um, when I'm squishing it in, this part isn't secure right now, but of course I, I secure it when I'm uh, making the landing gear. And so this part can come off after it's set up, and I use the canned air to help set it up 
spray some canned air on it, makes it harden up. I pull out, I unscrew the bolts, which leaves the nuts embedded in it with a nice hole through the landing gear. I pull it off, and I end up with the, the landing gear. And it just works so well. I was just so pleased with how it works. And then they all are the same shape and size. And so this is this is a reject, actually, because I this was before I had fine-tuned the shape of the mold, and so it's not quite flat on top. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of show you how, how strong they are. I've shown you how they kind of flex. You know, as I squeeze it, they'll flex. But you have to squeeze pretty hard. And then I'm going to just try to pull this open. <coughs> so I can, you know, so it does deform if you do it hard enough. But it is not going to break. That is really hard stuff to, to try to break. It will bend, but it's pretty hard. To, I mean, you can't break it, but it's, it's pretty strong stuff. It's really, I think, really kind of amazing stuff. And so what else was I going to tell you? Anything else? I hope I lost track of my list. Um, landing gear. I think that's about... Oh, I like uh, Sugru also. Um, because it comes in, you know, cool colors. You know, black, red, green. Um, but, you know, if I, use, if I can figure out how to do uh, Garrett's technique of coloring it, then I can have it different colors as well. But what's really nice is you can reuse it. Like, uh, I, I made the landing gear without the nuts in them. I decided I wanted the nuts embedded in the landing gear. I just cut off the top, stuck the most of it, and I changed the mold so it could have the nuts in it. Cut off the top, stuck the most of it back in the mold, reheated the top, and reheated part of this so it would, it would connect back together, melt back together and then squished it back in. And I just changed all six of them back to the six with the bedded nuts. And it was like really simple and really fast. It's just really cool stuff. And anyway, I thought, kind of thought we'd use this thread, or I would use this thread anyway, to kind of put uh, polymorph links in, in and kind of try to gather up um, all the ways of using polymorph. Oh, and one thing I did mention is for the mold, the polymorph will stick to a lot of things. It sticks to plastic. In fact, I even used it to repair um, the little quadcopter propellers. A uh, propeller broke. I didn't have a, a, a replacement, and so I used Polymorph to fix the propeller, and it worked. It held together really well. I tried the same thing with uh, Elevate propellers, and that did not work. But this is the copper tape I used. I don't think you need to use copper tape at all. Um, I think just like aluminum tape would work just fine. I often, uh, yeah, just like a muffler tape or whatever. But I think a metal tape would be really useful for the mold. And then with the mold, when I was making it, I just like ran the tape, you know, this direction along it. So I, I attached the tape along the inside, and then I just cut the tape so it would lie flat on top. Um, and I guess that's all I have to tell you about uh, Polymorph for now. It's just uh, an amazing stuff for robots. And that's it.